Uh, welcome, everyone. It's so good to uh, be back at the, with the mentoring hour this morning. And it's really great that uh, each one of you could connect. Uh, we will uh, pray, and we will uh, get started. Uh, I know that uh, some of our other uh, friends are still joining. Um, but uh, we, we can begin with a word of prayer, and I'm sure they'll, they'll all connect uh, shortly. So uh, let me begin with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, we thank you that, uh, uh, Father God, we can, uh, Lord, look at the scriptures. Lord, we can meditate on your word. And Father, thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, the blessing that the word is to our hearts and our lives, oh God. Father, even this morning, uh, as uh, we... Uh, In every heart and every life. Uh, bless this uh, time, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Um, so, welcome once again for those who just joined in. Um, this morning we would like to begin with uh, uh, like a short uh, uh, meditation, if you like, or uh, a short talk on a particular subject. And uh, we thought that, you know, uh, that that will be good for us to uh, to think about and ask questions about. Um, however, in the mentoring art, as we uh, shared earlier, the questions can be regarding um, uh, any any aspect. So students are welcome to ask questions with regard to christian life uh, christian ministry something that they're learning here uh, at the bible college or uh, something beyond uh, their curriculum and syllabus as well uh, but for the sake of uh, you know um, uh, if some focus we thought that we could uh, talk about a particular subject and then uh, invite questions on that subject and then move on to other questions so i hope uh, it's it's okay with everyone uh, and as we had uh, shared in our uh, communication today we will talk about uh, hearing from god uh, uh, hearing from god is so exciting uh, we have a god who speaks uh, we have a god who has spoken throughout the ages uh, he has spoken to people uh, in the old testament he has spoken to people in the new testament and today uh, he continues to speak to each one of us uh, god is a god who speaks in the now and uh, uh, you know he he uh, communicates what is on his heart to us uh, you know uh, who believe um, so as we look at uh, the uh, old testament we know that there are uh, mighty prophets of god like isaiah jeremiah ezekiel uh, who have their experiences of receiving a word from God, receiving a message from God to communicate to the people. Uh, and similarly, in the uh, New Testament, we do see God working through through um, you know, his men and women. Uh, but after the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we see that even ordinary believers begin to receive uh, God's communication in the form of you know, dreams, visions, uh, prophetic word, and they uh, minister to one another. So uh, hearing from God is, is seen throughout scripture. Now, another term that uh, we could use for hearing from God is uh, simply uh, being prophetic uh, or, or uh, you know, uh, the, the ministry associated with hearing God's voice. We also call it the prophetic ministry. Now, when we consider hearing from God, it's not just about um, hearing God's voice and uh, conveying a message. It, it is not limited only to that, but hearing from God uh, is uh, is just one step um, and, you know, we, we know that when we hear from God, it's life transforming. God gives us instructions. God gives us comfort, encouragement. So there's so much that happens when we really hear from God. Uh, we can hear God's word. Uh, and the next step would be for us to actually do what God is telling us to do. And that uh, will will uh, reveal you know, what God wants to do uh, in our lives. So we hear from God and we also do what God is telling us to do. And we see examples of this in scripture, uh, people like Daniel who heard from God and, uh, uh, you know, as the Lord led him, he communicated those messages. Uh, he he acted on it. Uh, people like Joseph who, who uh, uh, had 
the direction of God uh, to lead people in, in a crisis situation and they acted upon it and there was uh, an incredible um, uh, you know deliverance and people were blessed uh, because of hearing as well as doing the word of God. Now when we consider uh, the prophetic um, we we see a progression I already mentioned that um, uh, there are believers who can prophesy uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, but scriptures also talk about uh, uh, an office of the prophet where God calls uh, some men and women uh, to, to minister in that governmental authority to carry um, you know, a greater responsibility with regard to the prophetic ministry. They even call out uh, you know, give the church uh, direction, directives. So uh, there is also the office of a prophet. So in general, we know that all believers can uh, prophesy, but there is also the office of a prophet. So how is it that, you know, God uh, really speaks to us? Uh, a couple of uh, ways that we are um, familiar with uh, based on what um, a scripture uh, tells us is the primary way is through the written word. So, uh, you know, the standard of God's uh, word must be upheld. So that is the primary way in which God speaks to us. We also have the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Every believer, every born again believer has the Holy Spirit dwelling within them. And the Holy Spirit guides us, leads us uh, uh, according to the purposes of God. Uh, and of course, you know, through the prophetic ministry. So the prophetic ministry is to uh, receive a word from God through a prophetic word uh, or um, you know uh, through dreams visions and the various uh, uh, other other uh, manners in which you know God communicates to people and we see more and more that uh, you know people are uh, are understanding uh, the prophetic and uh, there is a, a sort of a, a prophetic movement uh, that that um, uh, is is um, um, you know, we see around us and God is really awakening us to the importance of the prophetic and also to, to move in the prophetic. So I'll just share a little bit about, you know, how uh, we um, as uh, human beings and believers, we hear from God. Uh, and after that, you know, I'll, I'll leave this time open. Uh, you may ask questions with regard to the prophetic ministry and then we'll move on to other questions. So. Um, we know that God is a spirit, and uh, in creating us, uh, you know, what, creating us human beings, God has created us spirit, soul, and body. Uh, we see that in First Thessalonians five thirteen, um, and the part of us that receives the message uh, of God or the communication from God is our spirit man. In Proverbs twenty verse twenty seven see that you know the uh, the spirit of a man is is the uh, lamp of the lord and god lights it up so uh, god communicates uh, mainly through our spirit man so that's where we receive god's communication um now how do we perceive god's communication we know that our body has uh, five senses we are able to feel see hear taste smell uh, and you know these these are natural and we understand how the body works similarly our spirit man also has um, you know at least five senses if not more um, through and through these senses we can perceive god's communication so in our spirit um, we are able to feel or sense uh, what god wants to speak to us and good examples are um, uh, in the book of acts we find that uh, you know about paul it is said that he was stirred in his spirit he was provoked in his spirit so you know a sense or a feeling in the spirit is one way in which we can perceive what god is saying the second is to be able to see and we're talking about seeing through uh, the spiritual senses and the spirit um, e e spirit eyes uh, how how can we uh, you know really grasp this there are examples in scripture where we find prophets of god like amos um, uh, seeing pictures uh, in amos 7 you know he he sees a, a, a coming judgment so he sees fire and locusts um, and in another in, in, in instance he sees uh, 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 
basket of fruit. So in this way, they saw in the spirit realm, and then they interpreted that and communicated it uh, to the people. Uh, dreams, visions, all of these come under uh, the perception where we are able to see what God is speaking to us. Hearing, um, uh, most often, you know, we, we hear God's voice not so much uh, audibly, but, you know, words can come into our spirit, words such as, uh, you know, blessing or uh, uh, something that God wants to communicate. Maybe I'm just giving an example. Uh, maybe we, we receive the word water, uh, but that word water may actually be referring to the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit. So after interpreting it, we know what God is really trying to speak to us. Uh, and the other senses, um, taste, where sometimes we are able to taste uh, and scriptures also tell us uh, that you know uh, like in the psalms uh, taste and see that the lord is good so the spirit man has a sense of taste and even based on that uh, we can receive god's communication and smell um, like you know we say we are the aroma of, of uh, christ so uh, through these senses we can perceive what the lord is uh, saying uh, we would need to interpret it uh, for which we will need to use our soul uh, you know for for the reasoning the analyzing and then um, uh, really convey the message that god is communicating um, so just wanted to share uh, briefly uh, about hearing from god and uh, it'll be great if there are any questions pertaining to hearing from god uh, please feel free to uh, pose those questions i'm uh, uh, looking at the chat here and Dan daniel oliver has a uh, comment he says i noticed my church pastor saying in a church announcement that holy spirit told me or holy spirit said but i have noticed many that uh, that ever the pastor says is wrong most of the times so is it hearing from god or something else uh, so when it is said that uh, uh, one is hearing uh, the holy spirit told me uh, in Daniel's experience, he found that he noticed that uh, uh, it was wrong. Right? So, uh, is it really hearing from God or something else? That's his question. So, I just want to um, leave it open for the faculty here. Um, um, yeah. Uh, hi, good morning. Just wanted to say that, um, like what we've been looking at, uh, the scriptures, that uh, um, as believers, as the sheep of the great shepherd, we have, each one of us, we have the privilege of hearing the voice of the shepherd, right? We have the privilege of hearing uh, the voice of our Lord. And that's how we are We are created. We are designed as new creations. and 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 that is something that we need to, uh, understand and uh, esteem and step into right so that's um, that that's a that's a reality that we see in scripture we we see that uh, the lord wants to speak um, the lord wants to communicate through his spirit through his word now, uh, now that aside we know that um, the lord is perfect his communication is perfect but we as human beings we are um, you know we are spirit soul and body our mind needs our soul our mind needs to be renewed to the word of god in order to really grasp what the spirit of god is saying and uh, and so um, we could have prejudices we could have biases we could be so um, you know we could be so soul focused or you know flesh focused and um, that we miss out something you know that is coming from the holy spirit right so so it's it's just that well uh, to answer daniel's question well uh, you know we could be hearing from god you know uh, no uh, so that's um, no doubt about it we are designed to hear from god um, but we also the second part of it is the confirmation or the or sorry the interpretation Right. Now, the Lord does speak in symbols. The Lord does speak to us uh, certain things in a symbolic manner. So if what is conveyed in a symbolic manner is taken literally, then there would be a miscommunication. right? Or uh, if I add my prejudice or bias to what uh, the Spirit of God is communicating, the perfect message, then there is again a 
you know, miscommunication. So, um, so uh, you know, this can happen to anyone. You know, this can happen to all believers, uh, pastors, whoever. You know, it can happen. But we have the privilege of um, of learning from our mistakes and correcting ourselves and going forward. Now, that's why we see um, Paul giving that instruction. Uh, let every prophecy be tested. You, know, you, you prophesy. He, says, he doesn't say, you know, don't prophesy. But he says, let it be tested. And um, yeah, the word and the spirit agree. So you test. And uh, in, in the same passage, you know, what, what um, Pastor Nancy said, um, 1 Thessalonians 5, is, you know, he, he talks about hold on to what is good. You know, don't despise prophety, prophecies. But you hold on to what is good in the sense that we are learning, we are uh, being, uh, you know, getting sharper and sharper to hear the voice of God and receive. So, um, so that's the journey we need to make. Yeah. So, yeah, I leave it at that. Thank you, Pastor Jai Kumar. Uh, uh, so, Daniel, um, does that answer your question, or you have uh, a follow-up question to ask? Okay, so, all right. So Daniel says, uh, got a good reply. Thanks. Um, thank you, Daniel. Let's continue if there are any other questions with regard to the same subject of hearing from God. Uh, please go ahead and ask them. And as uh, Pastor Jai Kumar was sharing, I, I was also reminded of the fact that, uh, um, you know, as we uh, hear from God and, um, you know, sort of practice it, if, if I may use that word, uh, then we can get better uh, at grasping what the Spirit of God uh, is saying to us, interpreting it uh, in the right manner, and also uh, you know, conveying uh, the right message. So Daniel, uh, that's another thing that uh, I, I just want to add uh, to what you said. So maybe the message which one is hearing is authentic, it's genuine. Uh, but somewhere in the interpretation, there could be issues uh, because of which um, you may have noticed that even though one is claiming that those words are from the Holy Spirit, it is not really coming to pass. So one can train uh, themselves in hearing from the Lord better. Okay, even if you have um, you know something to ask apart from today's subject uh, it's all right we can discuss on another theme okay, so sanjay uh, has posted from scripture and empirical evidence we know that the human body returns to the earth after death so what is the destination of the soul and spirit for both believers and non-believers? Are the soul and spirit inseparable? Do they have a common destination or separate destinations? Okay, so a couple of questions in there. Uh, right, so after death, the human, the human body returns to the earth. Two questions, or three questions. First is, what is the destination of the soul and spirit for both believers and non-believers? Second question, are the soul and spirit inseparable? Third, do they have a common destination or separate destinations? Um, can I answer that? Um, yes, please, Pastor. Right. Um, yeah, thank you, Sanjay, for that question so um so we know that as human beings we are tripart beings we are spirit soul body and so when a person dies uh, of course the body we can see it we know the body is put to the ground decays is destroyed um but now 
uh, the, the spirit, which is the eternal part of us. And then there is the soul. The soul connects the spirit and the body. And just, you know, to understand it, there is the human side of the soul and there is the spiritual side of the soul. And he said the human side of the soul, it is the human, the, the expression of the soul that we see visibly, right? Uh, the mind, the will, the emotions, uh, which, you know, when we interact with the, with the other person, we, in, we are interacting with that person's soul as well, the personality, the thoughts, their ex emotions, etc. So we could call that the human side of the soul. Uh, a lot of it is connected to the functions of the brain. Of course, all of that goes, all of that ceases. That means we no longer are able to interact, the brain decays and goes off. But we could look at it, as, look, we can look at the other part, which is the spiritual side of the soul, which is, you know, in one sense, the soul also is eternal. So it's connected to the inner man, the eternal part. So there is the spirit, which is eternal, and there is the spiritual side of the soul, which is also eternal, meaning uh, after a person dies, the body decays, the physical side of the soul is gone. But on the spiritual side, there is the spirit and the spiritual side of the soul, which continues to live. Because the person can feel, can think in the spirit as well, spiritual. Uh, and then, depending on whether they are a believer or non-believer, the spirit is going to go directly to God or going to go to heaven. Uh, examples of this is in Luke chapter 16, when Jesus talks about the rich man and Lazarus. So the rich man goes into hell, but he can feel, he can remember things. And he's, he's speaking to you know, Abraham and says, Father Abraham, can you send somebody back to my own people? Or can you, can Lazarus at least dip the tip of his finger and, in water and come and touch um, the tip of my tongue? So obviously there is a lot of feeling, there's a lot of emotion. Uh, the spirit is in hell, but there is that spiritual part of the soul that's also connected. So he can still feel, he can still, you know, there's memory, there's all of that. Uh, and similarly, when we go, when, when a believer dies, uh, the spirit goes directly to be with the Lord. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 through 8 says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, Paul says, you know, um, uh, for me to die is, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Uh, he says, shall I depart and be with the Lord? So obviously, as soon as he dies, he's going to be with the Lord. Uh, First Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, verse uh, 18 on, it talks about uh, uh, that the Lord Jesus will bring with him the spirits of those who have died in Christ. So that means... And when, when a believer dies, his spirit is being with the Lord. And when the Lord comes, this, he brings them with him. So the spirit is with the Lord. Uh, there is also the whole aspect of recognition, knowing, because we're going to be engaging in Bashir, we're going to be engaging in, you know, in a lot of things. And again, when we look through the book of Revelation, we see that when people die and they come into the presence of the Lord, there is worship. And, uh, and, and you know, their souls have been given, uh, they've been martyred to Christ and so on. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's 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 what we have known. That the, the, to answer your question, the spirit and the spiritual side of the soul are together. Right? Uh, they, and wherever the person is going to go, hell or heaven, they're going to go. It's it's going to go together. They're not separate. They're not, you know they're they're inseparable in that sense. Is that clear, Sanjay? I hope I can make. If you have a follow-up question, you're welcome. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, uh, Sanjay, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Pastor, I just wanted to check. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 1 to 8, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 18, and I missed the uh, scripture in Philippians. Oh, so we also uh, looked at uh, Luke chapter 16. We meant, yes. uh, referred to the story of the rich man, the Lazarus. Yes, and we also referred to Philippians chapter 1. Uh, it's around verse 21 where Paul says, to live is Christ, to die is gain. Sure. So go and be present with the Lord. Thank you, Pastor. Share those scriptures and 
Thank you for uh, clarifying this for Sanjay. Um, yeah, Sanjay says, thank you, Pastor. I took notes too. Uh, uh, coming to Shiva's question here, uh, she says, one of my friends, she's doing DN training and she asked to perform on Bollywood songs. Uh, she will not get marks if she doesn't dance on that song. So she should do that or not. First, she refused. She told, I don't dance on Bollywood songs. She didn't get marks, so what to do for this? OK, uh, since it has to do with music, uh, I think I will request Pastor Jay Kumar to uh, please try and answer Shiva's question. So she asks here whether her friend, is it OK for her friend to dance on a, a Bollywood song? And uh, since her friend refused, she did not get her marks. Uh, so that's also something that happened. Uh, so Pastor, would you have some thoughts? Okay. Um, so I guess it's a, uh, it's a like a, the person taking a stand uh, for what they believe in, and um, and also so so it's a good thing to check the song because. Um, you know, we know that some of the songs could have words that are very suggestive and vulgar and so on. Uh, and some songs need not be, you know, so, so, you know, if it's a question of marks and everything, you can, you can check the words of the songs, the lyrics of the songs and, um, and say, you know, this, uh, this is something um, that's uh, against my principle or against my values. So can I, can I suggest something else? You know, I, maybe I can dance to an instrumental. Uh, and uh, I can do that. So that's the that's another option. So now that uh, now I guess this is already done. So um, one thing is, even if it's up for discussion, you know, if, if you uh, if this person can, uh, you know, discuss with the superiors uh, authorities whoever is there, uh, and if it's possible for them to change their mind, you could always say, you know, it's not that I'm against dancing, but uh, the words of the song is what you know so if it's if there's something instrumental and i don't mind dancing or if there's can i suggest another song and i would like to dance to that so i think that can solve the problem um yeah i hope that helps shiba yeah thank you pastor Jekumar. and shiba says uh, thank you i think her question is answered Right, so um, really a good set of questions today. Um, right, so initially we were talking about hearing from God and then Sanjay's question uh, about the spirit and soul and their destiny. Uh, then Shiva's question about uh, taking a stand for the Lord. Okay, Sanjay. Sanjay uh, is asking another question here, or is that a comment? He says, as a music teacher, I refuse to teach a song which is inappropriate and most people obliged with. Okay, thank you, Sanjay. Thank you for sharing uh, from your experience. And as Pastor Jai Kumar uh, uh, shared with us, uh, sometimes we have to take a stand, right? And uh, um, yeah, and th that's how we, we can. Um, we we can honor God and you know, we can we can honor God's standards. Uh, so thank you so much, Sanjay, for sharing that. Um, yeah, please keep those questions coming. Okay, Nina, uh, she says for a believer too. After death, the soul continues to operate. This pastor, it's almost like um, a follow up. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, Nina, um, the soul continues to operate, meaning, um, so when we talk about the soul, we're talking about the ability to think, reason, remember, uh, I'm not sure in terms of memory, how much of the things of the world, most likely we, we will not remember the things of the world, but, you know, the other things, uh, how can we say that? Because in First Corinthians 13, um, Paul writes, uh, he says, 
um, and this also we did read about this also in first john chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 uh in, in both these places you find that uh paul writes here in first Corinthians 13 john says it in first john 3 uh, when we see him we will know him even as we are known right uh in first, first Corinthians 13 when that which is perfect is come then that which we know in part will go away we will know fully Right. So in both these places, First Corinthians 13, First John 3, there is the, the knowing aspect of our spirit being. Right? Uh, when you read through the book of Revelation, once again, uh, when John is in the spirit, of course, he's physically alive, but he's in the spirit. Uh, and then his interactions with the elders. Who are the elders? These are people who have lived on the earth. They're now in heaven. Uh, one of the elders identifies himself uh, in Revelation 19 as I am one of the prophets right so that means he is somebody who lived on the earth but he's de is dead now his spirit is in heaven so what's happening you can see John interacting with the elder uh, there is communication there is talk and the elder says I've been one of your pro one of the prophets you know so that means that there is the soul soulish aspect is still in operation so when we talk about the soul we're talking about you know recognition feelings so on so so i just qualify that as a spiritual side of the soul that means it's the part of the the, the things of the soul that are very connected to the human spirit right so uh, we refer to this as the inner man uh, or we could uh, you know it's the expression of the spirit the sp spirit is referred to as the hidden man of the heart you know, this is in First Peter chapter three, uh, verse five and six. The spirit is the hidden person of the heart, so it's like a, a complete person with this soulless dimension also to it. The aspect of knowing, feeling, emotion. John has a sense of direction. He says, "I heard a voice behind me. Uh, I heard he heard the sound of you know many waters. I see people worshiping, and so on. So all of those things which we attribute normally to the soul." Are also seen connected with the spirit. Um, so the answer to your question is yes. Even for uh, believer, uh, we see these expressions of the what we refer to as a soul. But remember, the physical part of the soul is gone. The you know the brain and whatever that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the inner man. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, uh, Nina, hope it answers your question. You may let us know if there is something more that you would like to ask. You you can, please. All right. Um, I'll proceed with the with the with the uh, comments and questions here in the chat daniel oliver uh, shares we have television social media and house uh, what all can we watch on tv social media and what all we should not sports news cinema reality show politics uh, national geography etc what is the criteria to see something or deny something so um, we can answer this question for Daniel Oliver. Uh, Pastor Deepika, could you uh, address this question, please? Yeah. Um, we generally apply uh, Philippians 4.8, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to uh, choosing what we watch, what we speak. Uh, so in Philippians 4.8 basically says, you know, whatever is honorable and whatever is pure and whatever is of good repute uh, those are the things that we should be dwelling upon uh, so even when it comes to our viewing uh, we would see whether uh, what we are watching is uh, agreeing with this principle or going against it and uh, based on that we can take a decision on whether something is uh, worthy of viewing or not uh, that was, that is one um, biblical verse that can be helpful, you know, in making our choices. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Deepika. 
uh, Daniel, I hope your question has been answered. Yes, all right. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for uh, confirming. Uh, I'll read the question from Lucy. She says, Pastor, when we happen to meet some of our relatives, they were telling me not to be too spiritual, just have a normal life. It was like they felt walking with Christ is not an easy walk. They felt so because the last few weeks, our family went through some stormy weather in case of health. Everything is good now. God has uh, strengthened through his word and kept me in his arms. How do I respond to the elderly people? Okay, so Lucy's question here is, how do we, um, in her case, the elderly people who are, uh, you know, telling her not to, not to be too spiritual, uh, but to just have a normal life. So how do we uh, address this question as a believer? Pastor Jaikumar, uh, would it be okay if I asked you to please? Thanks. Yeah. Um, so uh, that term too spiritual is a very relative thing, right? <laughs> For some, it could be like, okay, I'm going to pray and eat. Uh, don't be too spiritual. Uh, for some, so it's a very relative term. So we will never arrive at a place of not, not being, you know, uh, I mean, people being pleased with our life. Uh, at any point, so uh, the normal spiritual, the normal Christian life is a spiritual life, right? So um, uh, it, the thing is, I, I guess uh, what they're referring to, I'm just assuming that uh, you know, don't be weirdly spiritual, um, just be normal like any other person, right? So um, the thing is, uh, you know, uh, as believers, we we want to grow in our walk with the Lord. We want to know him intimately. We want to discover the call of God. We want to discover the purposes of God. And God also, uh, you know, uh, uh, invites us to um, to pursue the power of God, the name, the love, you know, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. And all that is, all these are open for us. And um, and the thing is that um, open and available for us. And we pursue it with all our hearts, right? Um, so when you're saying here a normal life a normal life is you know is all this put together right so the only thing is i think sometimes when we interact with people maybe you know for every um second and third line if you are if you are going to be quoting scripture if you are going to be you know doing that um, maybe they are put off you know by that um so uh, i think just relating to people normally um and also you know testifying to them about what god has done and in a very you know normal conversational way um you know that would be that would be fine i think so um uh, and and you said that you gone through some difficult times um you know and maybe you know it's an opportunity to say that you know god is there to guide us through the storms you know he is the peace he's the anchor through those storms um, and he's not the one who is, uh, you know, causing all the uh, all these circumstances and everything. So, uh, so we can say that you know God is with us. He's with me to take me, you know, through and bring me through. So, um, so you know, uh, so that's the uh, that's the greatest assurance. That's that's the greatest uh, peace. So, um, yeah. So maybe it's an opportunity to even testify to the relatives. To um, yeah, um, and it's an opportunity to go. You know, uh, and have some conversations, real heart-to-heart -heart conversations, to say, you know, what do you mean by too spiritual? You know, what is it that is bothering? What is it that is troubling? And then uh, it's an opportunity to share. Um, yeah. Okay. I hope that helps. Uh, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for sharing your perspective. Uh, Lucy, does that address your question? Please let us know in the chat uh, if it does. Uh, maybe just uh, yes. add, a, add a thought to yes, what uh, Pastor Jacob already said. Yeah, I think uh, what what has helped me personally is also to 
you know, kind of be firmly resolved uh, in uh, our own minds uh, about how we want to live, right? So, uh, uh, like, you are resolved that you are going to follow God. You're going to pursue God, no matter what people say. So people make comments like this, you know, hey, don't be so spiritual and all of that. But in your heart, your resolve is, I want to do what pleases God. Uh, and uh, that's it. So uh, you know, some scriptures that come to mind is uh, what Paul wrote in Galatians 1 verse 10. He said, if I still pleased men, I would not be a servant of Christ. In other words, I made, I made up my mind, I'm going to be a servant of Christ. So pleasing men is not... Is not my priority, and so like you know, Pastor Jigma said, some will get happy and some will not be happy, but that's not the issue. I'm here to please God. Uh, another thing would be in John 12, uh, talking about these Pharisees, uh, are some of the Jewish believe people who believed. It says uh, they love the praises of men more than the praises of God. So, so you know, again, they they wanted to follow the Lord. But they were afraid to come out openly in public. Uh, why? Because they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. So they had misplaced priorities. You know? It should be the other way. I want the honor of what comes from God rather than the honor that comes from me. And if that is very clear, then, you know, uh, it doesn't matter what people say. They will make fun of me, et cetera, et cetera. But, hey, I'm going to be spiritual. I'm going to, you know, love God passionately. I'm going to read his word. I'm going to pray. I'm going to push it God. I'm going to live with godly standards. Uh, that's it. Yeah? Uh, just, just that's going to help me personally uh, in my journey. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for sharing. And uh, Susie, um, Lucy has uh, mentioned here. Uh, she says because I hinder them from enjoying carnal activity like drinks, etc. Um, so. Lucy, just want to uh, add here to what uh, our pastor shared that uh, you know we we have to make up our mind and have this resolve to to live for God and live that uh, righteous godly life before people. Uh, sometimes when people are engaging in uh, you know carnal activities like this, uh, we can tell them, but then if they keep continuing uh, you know in, in the same activities to repeatedly tell them may not uh, help that much so we could pray for them and continue to live uh, our godly life before them and trust that you know god will god will impact them uh, through our life and god will also uh, uh, you know impact them uh, through the words that we are speaking so just want to uh, add that and i hope that addresses uh, you know this this uh, question online that you mentioned in the chat uh, and, and please feel free to uh, let us know. I'll move ahead with uh, uh, the other questions because uh, we have seven minutes here and we have uh, two more questions right now. Um, so Susie says in the scriptures, there's a mention of a thousand years in one day is uh, one day for the Lord. How do we relate this to the number of days God took to create everything? Uh, so uh, Pastor Ashish, uh, I'd like to request you to address this question, please. Yeah, so I'll, I'll um, give you a short answer, um, but we do have a course in the second year, uh, BC 212 on Christian apologetics, where we, you know, we deal with this as one of many topics that we address. But I'll give you a short answer. So what we believe is that the six days of Genesis were six literal Earth days. Um, that, that means there are 24 hour periods. Uh, and, and, there, and there are many ways you can look at it because God uh, had set all this in place. Now, we do not, so when the psalmist, Psalm 90, and also in Second Peter chapter 3, in both these places, when we have a reference where it says one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day, uh, we do not apply that to Genesis chapter 1. We don't do that. Uh, so Psalm 90 and 2 Peter 3, referring to one day as a thousand days, is just a figure of speech saying that time is immaterial to God. God lives out of time, so time means nothing to God, right? God is infinite in time. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He lives in the eternal now. For God, everything is now. That means that's why he's the great I am. For God, there is no past or future. He's in the now. The past and the future are the now for God. 
So that's, you know, that's how we understand Psalm 19, second Peter 3. We do not apply to Genesis 1. For one, I mean, there are many reasons. I'll just give you one, one quick reason. If, as some, and, and some Bible scholars do apply. I'm not, I'm not saying they don't do it. They do apply, but we, we believe they are wrong to do that. Why? Because if we say that every, 20, every day mentioned in Genesis chapter 1 is a thousand years, then on day six, when God created, you know, animals and uh, when he created animals and he created Adam, it, then the, the implication is God took 1,000 years to create Adam. And that would be absurd, right? No, Adam was found of the dust of the earth. Uh, the explanation is given to us in Genesis chapter 2, how it actually happened. God formed on the dust of the earth, he breathed, and he became a living being. That didn't take 1,000 years, that took an instant, right? So uh, just one response to that, that is if we apply, you know, that one day is 1,000 years in Genesis chapter 1, and you make that equal into 6,000 years, then if you break it down, uh, you know, just look at some of the details, uh, it implies God took 1,000 years to make Adam and uh, Adam, and uh, that is absurd, right? But we will look, we learn a lot more detail in our Christian apologetics course on how to respond to that. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, Susie, I hope that answers your question. Yes, she says, thank you, Pastor. Uh, all right, so I'll go back to the chat here. And uh, Daniel says, in the past two weeks, after joining APC, I have noticed that God has answered many questions of my personal life whose answers I was thinking were terminated. Really praise God for that. Wow, uh, that's a you know wonderful praise report. Uh, and we are so glad, uh, Daniel, and uh, trusting that you know many more uh, questions will be answered as you journey with us uh, through your courses. Um, I'll just continue here in the chat. All right. Um, so if there is any other question, maybe we can accommodate one question um, if you'd like to ask, if anyone would like to ask. Okay. Um, so if uh, there are no more questions for today, uh, we can pray and close then proceed to our classes. Okay, Getrude is um, asking a question. She says, how do you pray in the spirit? Okay, so uh, praying in the spirit is to pray uh, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And generally we use this term, uh, pray in the spirit uh, for praying in tongues. Uh, because Paul makes a distinction. He says, you know, I pray in the spirit and I also pray uh, with my understanding. Um, and this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 14 and 15. So, you know, he makes a distinction there. And therefore, we understand uh, pray in the spirit as praying in tongues. So how do we pray in tongues? Uh, praying in tongues is a gift which uh, manifests after the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's a prayer language that God gives us. We uh, speak mysteries unto God. We don't understand this, this language, but uh, we practice it like any other language. So the more you use that language, uh, you 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 know, it, it increases. And so the, the key to praying in the spirit is to pray more uh, in the spirit. And that way you will develop yourself in uh, praying in the spirit. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, we, we have a link here, APC Books. Uh, kindly look it up. Uh, we do have a, a book on the wonderful benefits of praying in tongues. Uh, it will answer many more questions that you may have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for making the time. Let's keep this going. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, really uh, exciting, you know, to discuss together in this way. Uh, I'll just wrap up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, your presence in our midst. Lord, we thank you that, uh, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, God, that, uh, Lord, you're speaking to each one of us. And Father God, we pray that uh, we will continue to hear your voice, oh God, make us more sensitive uh, to hear your voice, Father. Lord, we surrender uh, the rest of the day into your hands. And Father, we, we seek your blessing upon uh, everything that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone.
have a, a really a great day. Uh, have uh, you know uh, lovely classes. Enjoy your classes. Uh, bye for now. We will meet again next Thursday, 8 a.m. And please do connect to the call once again. Thank, Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, ma'am.